Hello friends. Um, today we are going to discuss uh, a very old technique that has been used um, since the time, I guess, the first stack overflow exploitation um, came into existence around 83. Um, basically, this is called as vanilla stack overflow or classic stack overflow is what I would call it. Um, in this case, basically, uh, we identify an application that has a buffer overflow and try to exploit that buffer overflow uh, using um, stack-oriented techniques that allow us to execute a specific assembly program, which is called shell code, uh, that allows you, as an attacker, to control the user's computer, either by opening up a shell um, or adding a new user to the computer's list or um, just, you know, exploiting it by popping up a calculator in front of the user. Uh, so, in this case, I have chosen uh, an application called RM Downloader. This application is um, susceptible to a stack overflow, uh, which can be exploited by using an M3U file. An M3U file is basically a playlist file that allows um, users to specify, um, you know, either the HTTP URLs or the location of uh, the MP3 files on the user's computer um, or, or, or something similar like that. What has been observed is that um, this specific application is susceptible to stack overflow, uh, which allows you uh, to use your own shell code and exploit the system. Um, here's an example of uh, a file that allows you to exploit the stack overflow in the specific application. Uh, this is a simple Python script where you can observe that you have uh, a basically an M3U file that can be created um, and then can have uh, basically uh, an HTTP URL uh, indicating to that specific um, application that you're trying to you know point towards an HTTP URL. However, rather than providing the the URL, you actually provide um, you know 17,417 uh, characters um, followed by uh, you know a control pointer uh, pivot. So uh, it can be observed that after 17,417 character sets, uh, you can basically control uh, the instruction pointer by overflowing the stack, um, which can be which will be followed by a set of no op instructions. No op instructions are basically instructions that uh, allow basically a processor to execute an instruction that does not do anything other than uh, just goes along with the CPU's clock. Uh, but other than that, the, that instruction doesn't do anything, which uh, which is a blessing for the attacker because that way an attacker does not really need to know exactly the address of where he would be jumping back into the shell code and can jump into the no ops. So that way he can execute the shell code um, easily. Which um, in this case we can see then uh, after the no ops is we use a shell code. In this case, the shell code that I'm going to use is uh, basically. Uh, a program which allows uh, you to open up a port on uh, on the machine and the port number is 5555 uh, so let's quickly take a look at how this can be exploited uh, one quick um, note would be that if you look at the specific um, address this is an address of an instruction that I'm going to take advantage of um, usually this is an instruction that's either into uh, into a DLL that's either an operating system DLL or uh, or your application DLL. It's always a good idea to find um, instructions that are useful to execute these kind of uh, overflow exploits using the application DLL. So the reason you might want to do that is because that way you can make your um, exploit portable across different operating system packages, which would be you know Windows XP, SP1, SP2, or SP3. Um, if you take an operating system DLL and take an address of like jump ESP instruction or a push ESP and a return instruction from an operating system DLL, um, you sort of you know restrict your um, exploit to be exploited only uh, only on that specific system with that specific package number. So that is just a quick tip uh, for people who are interested in knowing that. Uh, let's look at how this application executes. So let's start the application. Um, as we had said, just want to make sure that there is no port executing right now um, or no shell executing at that port right now so that um, we don't override something that's already there. So as you can see, 
the telnet connection has paid to that port. What I'm going to do is now uh, open up uh, an M3U file that should allow us to exploit the system that we were talking about. In addition, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put a breakpoint uh, so that we can see how the instruction jumps and where does that instruction jump to. So if there's a breakpoint on 1003D5 F53, which is push ESP and return, which is basically similar to jump ESP, uh, and that will allow us to execute our shut code. All right, let's get back to opening the file. This RM downloader. This is the exploit classic.m3u, as I mentioned uh, in the previous case. Oops. And if you look at it, uh, the instruction pointer is pointing right now to the address that we had pointed to. That means we were successful in exploiting. So if you can look over here, it seems like we have been able to overwrite um, you know, the shell code correctly. I'm going to point back to ESP. So the ESP is right now pointing um, into our <coughs> no op instructions. Um, I'll execute this instruction one step at a time. So push ESP has been executed. You can see that um, you know the address from the ESP has been pushed onto the stack, and now you can return. As you can see, you have already now returned back to triple zero DC six C four, which is over here, and the EIP, which is the instruction pointer, is pointing to that. Um, so executing it completely and if you look at it over here on the right side it says running which means that the application hasn't been terminated uh, and it's still running in the memory executing our shell code uh, if you look over here this is where it's pointing at this point of time uh, so let's go back to our command prompt and let's do a telnet and there it is. You can see that the shell has been exploited. Uh, I'm sorry, the application has been exploited and a shell code is running right now on port 555. Uh, so there you go. That's a quick uh, example of how to exploit a stack overflow, uh, an example of stack overflow exploit or a classic or vanilla stack overflow exploit. The next section will focus on structured exception handling, which is a special type of uh, exploit that can be uh, used uh, in the Windows system. Thank you.